Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, today we are going to discuss yet another interesting topic in the pericyclic reactions that is cycloaddition reactions. So cycloaddition reaction, the name is suggesting us like you are definitely going to get a cyclic molecule and that is happening because of addition of two or more pi unsaturated individuals, right. So when you try to compare it with the electrocyclic reactions, electrocyclizations normally involve the acyclic unsaturated polyene systems where the cyclic reorganization of the pi electrons is taking place as a result of which at an expense of one pi bond you will be seeing a sigma bond closing the molecule acyclic system giving you a cyclic molecule. Whereas in the case of cycloadditions of course you will be getting a cyclic molecule but it is not happening entirely within the same molecule it has to depend on uh, cycloadditions has to proceed by adding two or more unsaturated systems. So the simplest example for cycloaddition reactions is the addition of two ethylene molecules. The two ethylene molecules will add with each other and convert into cyclobutane at the expense of pi bond, one pi bond from each ethylene molecule, right. So if you see that reaction, so this is one ethylene molecule and this is another ethylene molecule. So if you try to add it, what is happening? This ethylene molecule is using one of the pi bond to convert it into a sigma bond whereas the other is also same, say doing the same, right. So this under the specified uh, conditions either thermal condition or under photochemical condition which we will look uh, later words which is allowed. So you will be seeing a cyclic molecule that is cyclobutane, cyclobutane. So this is the individual 1 and 2 and this is 3 and 4 for example, 4 carbon atoms are there. So if you see you will get this carbon atoms here. So what has happened? A new sigma bond has been produced between 1 and 3 and 2 and 4, right. So how it has happened? Because of the utilization of one of the pi bond from each uh, ethylene molecule into a sigma bond, okay. So this is the simplest example of cycloaddition reaction. Unlike the electrocyclizations, so here also you will be seeing the reaction proceeding via a cyclic transition state where the electrons are cyclically reorganizing themselves like this. So a new sigma bond is slowly generated and the existing pi bond is slowly vanishing. So this is the cyclic transition state. So the forward reaction where the pi individuals are converting into the cyclo cyclic molecule we call this as cyclo addition. The backward reaction where a cyclic molecule is converting into open chain unsaturated systems is called as cyclo reversion or retro cyclo addition which is exactly opposite to the forward process, right. So either thing can happen and uh, both of them are treated as pericyclic reaction only that to cycloaddition reactions. So how do you classify the cycloaddition reactions? As earlier case we have classified the electrocyclic reactions based on the number of pi electrons involved in it in the reaction. So similarly here also in the cycloaddition reactions based on the number of pi electrons involved we have categorized uh, the cycloaddition reactions into two types. One is 4n systems and the other is 4n plus 
2 pi systems, 4n system and 4n plus 2 pi systems. How do you represent a cyclic cycloaddition reaction is the question now. So, if you have 2 ethylene molecules, this ethylene molecule is using 1 pi bond that means 2 pi electrons it is giving and the second individual or the second partner is also giving 2 pi electrons. So, therefore, when you are writing the reaction, the reaction should show the number of pi electrons contributed by each pi system in the square brackets plus 2 pi. So, what does it mean? So, the first system is giving, first individual is giving 2 pi electrons and the second individual is again giving 2 pi electrons. Together, it is shown in the square bracket 2 pi plus 2 pi, which indicates that the first individual is contributing 2 pi electrons and the second individual in turn is also contributing 2 pi electrons. So, this is a 2 pi plus 2 pi cycloaddition reaction and the result we have seen already this is cyclobutane. What happens if the participating individual is this one? So, the first one is butadiene molecule and the second is ethylene molecule. I know that all of you are familiar with this reaction. So, what is this reaction? Exactly, Diels-Alder reaction. So, Diels-Alder reaction takes place between a butadiene, a diene system and a ethylene molecule, right. So, resulting in the formation of a cyclic adduct, right. So, that is the Diels-Alder reaction. So, how many electrons are being contributed by this butadiene? There are 2 pi bonds, therefore, this is a 4 pi electron contributing system. So, this ethylene will contribute 2 pi electrons, therefore, this is the case. So, how do we represent this kind of reaction now? So, in the square brackets, the first individual is giving 4 pi electrons and then the second individual is giving 2 pi electrons together it is a 4 pi plus 2 pi system. So, these type of reactions will fall under 2 n plus pi, 2, uh, 4 n plus 2 pi systems, whereas this fall as under the category of 4 n pi systems, right. So, as a result of which you could see the cyclic adduct molecule, right. How it is forming? So, this pi bond is shifting over here, this might be here and here. So, at the expense of 2 pi bonds out of these 3, you are getting 2 new sigma bonds. Where are those new sigma bonds? This is the first sigma bond and this is the second sigma bond, right, where cyclic adduct is formed. So, you can see one more example of such kind where the reaction is taking place between the butadiene and acetylene, right. So, when you look at this molecule, one may easily get confused like, so this acetylene is having 2 pi bonds and how many it is going to contribute and under which category it falls, right. So, though it is having 2 pi bonds acetylene molecule, it utilizes only 1 pi bond for the cycloaddition reaction. So, therefore, what we will be seeing is hexadiene, cyclohexadiene, 1 comma 4 dihydro cyclohexadiene, right. So, this is the case. So, if you see some other examples where this is cyclopentadiene, right. So, cyclopentadiene on reaction with an ethylene molecule what will be seen as the product? This, right. So, there are several other examples of cycloaddition reactions which we will discuss in the next class, right. So, now we will try to understand the mechanism how the cycloaddition reactions are going to happen, right. So, how do we need to read them, right. 
So, any unsaturated system if you see that has two phases because the double bonded uh, system where the sp2 carbon atoms are there will be planar in nature, right. So, if this is the ethylene molecule, one carbon atom is here and the other carbon atom is here, it is in the plane. So, it has two phases, one is the above uh, top phase and the other is the below, below phase, right. So, two phases are there. If this ethylene molecule is utilizing same phase for interaction with, with the another ethylene molecule, so we call it as suprafacial individual, suprafacial means same phases. Both the carbon atoms are trying to extend their arms or the orbitals to form a pi sigma bond in the same direction, right. So, if the carbon atoms at the end of this ethylene molecule are utilizing opposite phases. That means, one is trying to form the bond in the forward direction that is the front phase and the other is forming the sigma bond and the helping, uh, helping to form the sigma bond in the other phase. We call it as antarafacial. So, two phases will be seen. One is the suprafacial mode of interaction, the other is the antarafacial mode of interaction. If this ethylene molecule is trying to form the sigma bond in the same phase. This is the lower phase and this is the upper phase, right. So, and there is one more ethylene molecule, so which is also approaching the individual, so to form the sigma bond in the same phase. So, what we will say is this is a 2 pi system that is for sure and then it is trying to form the bond from the same phase, right. So, suprafacial is denoted by S and this is another pi individual. So, which is again using its ability to form the sigma bond from the same phase, right. So, this the reaction now will be represented as 2 pi supra plus 2 pi supra. Okay. So, for example, if one of the ethylene molecule is using the opposite phases to form the sigma bond. So, the first individual is not supra, it is now using the opposite phases, right. So, you have to name it as 2 pi antarafacial. So, while the second one is still suprafacial. So, the reaction should be mentioned as 2 pi antara that means the first individual is approaching the other individual in an antarafacial mode plus the second individual is supra 2 pi antara and 2 pi supra right. So, to get much more clarity, so I have brought some of the molecular models to show it to, to you right. So, this is an ethylene molecule. So, this ethylene has for example, yeah. So, this is an ethylene molecule, you can see it is in the same plane, sp2 carbon atoms, two uh, pi bonds are there at the center, right. So, when you see them in the form of the orbitals, the pi bond orbitals, so you see like this. So, both the lobes are having same sign, therefore, they are bonding in nature, a pi bond is there in between this carbon atom and this carbon atom, right. Now, you see, when another ethylene molecule is approaching for the bond formation, when another ethylene molecule is approaching for the bond formation, let us say the pink color ones are negatively, no, negative lobes and the uh, violet color ones are positive lobes. So, what happens? when the same sign lobes approach each other, same wave function lobes. So, they will result in the extensive end on end overlapping and results in the formation of a sigma bond, right. Now, see. So, what mode of interaction can be fruitful in this case of example? <coughs> Both the positive lobes are on the same phase for this first individual, they are on the lower phase and for the second individual, they are on the upper phase. So, what happens? So, they can directly bind with each other resulting in the formation of a sigma bond this way, right. So, this is suprafacial and this is again suprafacial. What if this 
is having the orbital orientation like this. So, what happens now? So, the first individual is still suprafacial and the second individual in order to form a bond, so where the positive lobe is? So, positive lobe for this individual is here and this carbon atom it is here. So, that means it cannot directly use the same phase for the bond formation. So, some bond rotation or some different approach of the other molecule has to happen here, right? So, which we will discuss next. Now, this is an antrafacial mode of approach and this gives you the suprafacial mode of approach. So, now we need to discuss about the Woodward Hoffman rules. So, Woodward Hoffman rules will clarify so on which mode of interaction under which condition of the reaction that is thermal condition or photochemical reaction uh, photochemical condition the reaction is allowed or the reaction is not allowed. So, now we know that the geometrical approach of the uh, molecules will be seen in two different ways one is suprafacial mode and the other is the antarafacial mode. The two participating pi individuals should be parallel to each other right. So, if they are perpendicular to each other that gives that has to happen through the antarafacial mode. So, antarafacial mode will allow or will ask you or will demand you to go for the perpendicular approach which is geometrically not favorable, okay. So, that also we will see. Now, so in a 2 pi 2 pi system where 2 ethylene molecules are participating in the reaction 2 pi 2 pi system, right. So, suprafacial has to be allowed. So, for that Woodward uh, rules will help us to understand what mode of interaction is allowed and what mode of interaction is not allowed under a particular reaction condition. So, there are three methods to investigate or to uh, understand the reaction cycloaddition reactions as similar in the case of electrocyclic reactions. The first one is frontier molecular orbital uh, method and the second one is orbital correlation method and the third one is transition state aromaticity method, right. So, any of these three methods will take you or will conclude the same results, right. So, let us continue with the frontier molecular orbital approach to understand the cyclic addition, cycloaddition reactions. So, in a in the case of electrocyclic reactions according to the frontier molecular orbital theory, so what we have seen is you have to select the homo molecular orbital from the molecule individual and then you have to drive the reaction, right. So, by rotating either in the same direction that is con mode or in the opposite direction that is the disc mode, you will be seeing the cyclic molecule. Whereas, in the case of cyclo addition reactions, so you are not dealing with the single individual, you have to deal with two or more individuals, right. So, when you are dealing with two or more individuals, and you are trying to solve this reaction or understand this reaction using the frontier molecular orbital theory. One thing we need to keep in mind like frontier molecular orbital theory always need the help of homo molecular orbital and the lumo molecular orbital. In electrocyclizations we never bothered about the lumo molecular orbital, right, lumo. So, but in the case of cyclo additions we definitely need to consider the lumo because all the electronic transitions happen between the homo to lumo. And now, where to select the homo and where to select the lumo? Because in the worst case, if two individuals are participating, one individual has to be uh, contributing the homo molecular orbital and the other individual has to give the lumo molecular orbital, right. So, select the homo molecular orbital from one individual and the lumo molecular orbital from the another individual, right to check the feasibility of the cycloaddition reactions. So, if you have this reaction again, so ethylene molecule. So, there are two sp2 carbon atoms. So, therefore, you will see psi1 and psi2, two pi molecular orbitals. When the electronic configuration is shown, so it is psi1 2 and psi2 0, right. So, there is no electrons here. So, the same is the case with the second individual. But what we need to consider here is all the pericyclic reactions are either thermally driven or photochemically driven. 
So that means in any case the Fourier cyclic reaction may be happening by taking the source of energy as heat or by taking the source of energy as light. Either you need to irradiate or you need to heat the molecule. So to show the pericyclic reactions, right. So now we need to also check in which conditions which will be homo and which will be lumo. So this second individual is also having two sp2 carbon atoms. So that means two pi molecular orbitals psi1 and psi2 are there under thermal conditions. If you look into the thermal conditions, all thermal reactions are ground state reactions. From the first beginning of this uh, pericyclic course, we have been discussing that all the thermal reactions are ground state reactions. So ground state uh, only the reaction will take place. All the photochemical reactions are excited state reactions, first excited state. Reactions will happen and first from the first excited state in the photochemical conditions, right. So therefore, under thermal conditions, both the molecules are under the ground state only. So in ground state, if you want to consider homo from the first individual, right. So which one becomes homo? Yes, very good. So psi1 becomes the homo molecular orbital. And if you have to opt for the lumo from the second individual, so which one becomes the lumo? Psi2, exactly. Right. So come to the molecular orbitals. So if this is psi1, the homo molecular orbital, and this is psi2, the lumo molecular orbital, how it will be? Psi1 has mirror plane of symmetry and psi2 has C2 axis of symmetry, right. So psi1 is having mirror plane of symmetry that is sigma plane of symmetry and psi2 is having C2 axis of symmetry. So there, were, there won't be any node in the case of psi1 and one node will be there in the case of psi2, right. So from the beginning we have been discussing two modes of approach that is suprafacial and the anterofacial, right. If both the lobes on the same face are involved that is suprafacial. If both the lobes are from the different faces that is anterofacial, right. So now, so under thermal conditions 2 pi plus 2 pi system, this is a 2 pi and this is a 2 pi system. Which mode of interaction is seen for formation of the cyclobutane, see. This can bind with this easily to form a sigma bond. But here in this case, the lobes are not same. So therefore, what is happening? The first individual is using the lobes from the same face. So definitely it is suprafacial. The second individual is not able to do that and it has to use the lobes in the opposite faces. So that means this is anterofacial, right. So if you still want to do suprafacial mode of interaction in the thermal condition for your information, it is not going to give any product, it is not possible, it is not possible. So what mode of interaction is possible in the thermal condition? suprafacial and anterofacial, suprafacial and anterofacial mode of interaction is allowed under thermal conditions. Let us draw the table here under thermal conditions in 4N system that is 2 pi plus 2 pi, supra supra is not allowed. What is allowed? 
supra antara is allowed. So, now let us see the same thing in the photochemical condition. So, under photochemical conditions, so what is happening here? So, it is having psi 1, psi 2 and this is also having psi 1, psi 2. Photochemical conditions means you have to irradiate one of the two reactant molecules, right? either one is fine. So, that means one molecule is in the excited state, the other is still in the ground state. Okay? So, now if this is in the excited state, what has happened? An electronic transition has happened from psi 1 to psi 2. So, therefore, the configuration becomes psi 1 1 and psi 2 1. For this, this is psi 1 2 and psi 2 0. How do you choose the HOMO here? Which one is HOMO now? This has a new HOMO now compared to the thermal conditions now, right? So, psi 2 becomes the HOMO molecular orbital. In the second individual, if you look for the LUMO molecular orbital, psi 2 again is the LUMO here, where this scenario is seen under the photochemical condition, right. So, now HOMO, this is the psi 2 1, which is HOMO and so this is psi 2 0, which is LUMO, right. So, psi 2 means what is happening? Yeah. So, these are the psi 2 molecular orbitals, one is HOMO and the other is LUMO. Now, let us see here, if you connect these two, so that is bonding and these two are also same wave functions, so bonding. So, the first individual is approaching by suprafacial mode and the second individual is also using the lobes on the same phase. So, therefore, it is also suprafacial. So, both are suprafacial. So, therefore, under photochemical conditions, supra supra is allowed and supra antara is not allowed so for a 2 pi plus 2 pi system supra supra facial mode of interaction is allowed photochemically and it is thermally forbidden Supra antara facial mode of approach is allowed thermally and it is photochemically disfavored, not allowed. So, this is the Woodward rule for Woodward uh, Hoffman rule for 2 pi plus 2 pi system. So, let us see the 4 pi plus 2 pi system also, 4 n plus 2 pi systems. So, now 4 n plus 2 pi system, so that means a butadiene with a ethylene molecule. So, this is a 4 pi electron system and this is a 2 pi electron system. So, under thermal conditions, so let it be under thermal conditions. Hmm. So, what are the pi molecular orbitals? Psi 1, Psi 2, Psi 3, psi 4 for butadiene, psi 1 and psi 2 for ethylene molecule. So, what is the electronic configuration? Psi 1 2, psi 2 2, psi 3 0, psi 4 0, psi 1 2 and psi 2 0. So, now under thermal condition, both the individuals are in ground state only. You have to select the HOMO from the ground state of one individual and LUMO from the ground state of another individual. right? So, let us take HOMO molecular orbital from the butadiene. So, from the ground state, psi 2 is the HOMO, psi 2 is the HOMO. So, from the ground state for the second partner, psi 2 0 is the LUMO, right. So, this is the HOMO, 
and this is lumen. So, supra supra mode we will check first whether it is allowed under the thermal condition or not. So, psi 2 molecular orbital you should be knowing all the molecular orbitals right. So, how do they look like otherwise it is difficult. So, what is this? So, this is the psi 2 molecular orbital which is homo and this is again psi 2 molecular orbital which is lumo right. Look at this the lower phase is having a different set of lobes psi 2 is having one node at the center and this is also having one node at the center right. So, when you try to connect these two it is bonding exactly right. So, this is again bonding. So, that means the first individual is participating as a suprafacial individual and the second one is also as a suprafacial individual right. So, suprafacial mode on both the partners is giving you the reaction under thermal condition for a 4 pi plus 2 pi system. So, the reaction should be mentioned as on the arrowhead 4 pi supra plus 2 pi supra which is thermally allowed for this system. So, if I want to show you the same using this molecular models see this. So, for our uh, convenience I have removed the hydrogens at the terminal carbon atoms. So, that you can see the lobes in a better uh, way and understand it clearly right. So, now this is a butadiene system this is a butadiene system let us hold it similar to that what we have represented in the boat right now you see. So, this is the violet color lobes which can be seen here these two on the first and second carbon atom and these are the pink color lobes on the third and fourth carbon atom right. So, one node is there at the center of this. So, C 2 axis of symmetry is there for this molecular orbital right. Now, how it is going to add with the ethylene individual ethylene molecule. So, this is the ethylene molecule. So, this is the psi 2 molecular orbital in my right hand for the ethylene molecule and this is the psi 2 molecular orbital which is homo for the butadiene molecule. So, when this approach each other what is happening here you see. So, the lobes on the same phase of the butadiene are capable of interacting with the lobes on same phase of the ethylene molecule. So, as a result of which a sigma bond is formed between them fruitful orientation right. So, this is what you see in the board. So, this is participating as a suprafacial individual and this is also participating as the suprafacial individual. So, supra supra mode of interaction between the butadiene and the ethylene molecule which is categorized under 4 n plus 2 pi system under thermal conditions is always allowed right. So, what happens if you try to see this reaction under photochemical conditions. So, under photochemical condition so what is happening you have to choose the homo from the first excited state. So, first excited state means what is happening psi 2 is having one electron and psi 3 is having one electron. So, now the homo molecular orbital is psi 3. So, this happens under photochemical condition. So, now psi 3 means how many nodes should be there? Two nodes should be there. This is not psi 3, this is psi 2. So, therefore, so this is the psi 3 molecular orbital which is homo in the butadiene now under photochemical conditions. So, because we have to choose the homo under uh, in first excited state right. So, when you try to connect this two, it is still bonding here and this one cannot bind here. So, that means supra supra is not allowed under photochemical conditions. So, for 4 n systems that is 2 pi plus 2 pi system. So, thermal conditions are not favorable photochemically allowed they are photochemically allowed. Whereas, in the 4 n plus 2 pi systems that is 4 pi plus 2 pi system thermal is allowed thermal supra supra is thermally allowed and it is photochemically 
forbidden, right. So, just see the entire Woodward uh, Hoffman rules for this and then we will get some clarity. So, pi electron system mode of cyclo addition allowed where and forbidden where it is forbidden yeah so 4n pi electron system supra supra mode of interaction is photochemically allowed right so that we have discussed already so supra supra mode of interaction with 2 pi plus 2 pi system is allowed photochemically and thermally it is forbidden and now supra antara mode of approach or antara supra mode of approach is thermally allowed and photochemically not allowed similar is the case here antara antara mode of approach can also be seen like that right in 4n plus 2 pi systems supra supra or antara antara mode of interaction is thermally allowed and photochemically not allowed whereas supra antara or antara supra mode of interactions are photochemically allowed and thermally forbidden right so if you understand the woodward fish woodward hoffman rules so then it will be quite easy to solve the cycloaddition reactions with this right so we'll solve uh, so many uh, number of examples on 2 pi 2 pi plus 2 pi systems in the next class thank you